On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team returns to the Southern Hemisphere to search for the spirit of a Catholic priest in Chile. Father Juan, can you please show yourself? Static ion cannons going up really quickly. Something happened crossing that open doorway. Who's here with us right now? And a new addition to the group gets a rude welcome from Father Juan. I felt like someone just pushed my head down. Holy crap. Then the team hits the books at a landmark library in Valparaiso. If you understand us, come through the doors. I just saw someone. Have Rob and Paul found a librarian whose rest is long overdue? You just hear a whisper. What was that? Everyone to El Bosque, Chile. As you guys know, Ashley has some things she had to deal with at home. She's not going to be able to be with us on this investigation, but uh, hopefully she'll be back soon. Paul has stepped in and um, has some new equipment that he's going to share and help Barry out with tech. Thanks, Rob. It's good to be here. It's actually great being part of a uh, team that's actually on the cutting edge of uh, paranormal research, and I hope that uh, in some way I can actually uh, help. Paul is actually joining us from a TAPS family member team, which he has co-founded and led. Uh, he has a real tech background, and he's known Barry for quite some time. So he's being brought in to assist Barry in the tech department and making sure that we always have the cutting-edge equipment that will help us on these investigations. Hey, guys, we're headed to the city hall of El Bosque. During the early 1900s, it was used as a reform school for orphans, and the school was operated by the Catholic priests. Later on, it housed a retirement home for those priests. Uh, it is known that some of the priests did die there. Now the building is used as a government center, and it holds the offices for the mayor. So in terms of activity, we have full-bodied apparitions of priests that have been seen in numerous areas of the city hall, as well as staff members reporting to hear the sounds of children playing, as well as crying throughout the entire area. It's always a little strange when you do these kind of apparitions of priests. Yeah, you always kind of wonder, you know, people of faith like that, it's like, why wouldn't they move right on to the other side? Why would they kind of linger and right. communicate with us? Well, maybe we'll find out tonight. All right, Brandy, good call. Let's get in there and uh, find out what we got. Carlos. Hey. Rob, how are you? Fine. Morning. Hi. This is Dustin, Barry, and Paul. Welcome to City Hall of El Bosque here. Could you tell us actually about the history of this location? This uh, location is a very old building. Uh, Sergio Livio was the one that built this uh, place. After that, this uh, building was uh, destined to an orphanage. Mm -hmm. And served as a, as a home for retired priests as well? Of course. That's another part of also in the story, that uh, this priest uh, appears many times. We understand that this was actually at one point um, used as a, as a place for the Air Force and they tortured alleged communists. Exactly. That's why we believe that uh, it's very active, uh, this place. Well, if you could take us around and actually show us where for the sure, things have sure. happened. Come, All right. I will show you. Now. Terrific. Yeah, we'll follow you. We're going to do that. Okay. So here we are in the Human Resources Office. We had uh, two secretaries here sitting. They saw the priest father one pass through that door and went away. Did he actually like come and open the doors or did he just kind of pass through? No, he passed through completely because the door was closed. Do we know what this uh, office was used for before, maybe when the priests were here? Yeah, uh, this was the bedroom of Father Juan. Here we are in the main staircase of uh, the city hall. I was cleaning the steps going up to the mayor's office at around 2 in the morning. I suddenly noticed a priest in a robe walking up the steps. I said, excuse me, sir, but he just kept going. I followed him for a little while, and then he just vanished. This is the stairs where it descends to the basement of the city hall. Well, you know, we had a, a political coup, coup in uh, 1973. Militars, they took the power of the, the country, and uh, many people disappeared. 
And this is a, a place that were tortured there, down there. So, so we don't know exactly what happened down there. We know the torture, torture took place yeah, yeah. and possibly mm -hmm. murder mm -hmm. if these people disappeared. For sure, for sure. Okay. For sure. Okay, here we are in another office here. When people were working here, they were leaving the office, locking the door, and when they were coming next day, they were founding the desk completely a mess. All the, the things were around, the computers were on. So is this still ongoing? It's still yeah. happening? Yeah. I think something that uh, might be worth doing is if we actually set up a few things in here and then we just lock the door and, and close it off and see if anything happens. Sure. Definitely give it a run. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll follow you out before yeah. anything gets messed up. Yeah, before. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we are in the archives room. When they rebuilt the city hall, they discovered this door. When they opened it, they found shoes of kids, clothes on the floor, and they found sort of cages where they believe also that they kept the kids. So this was for the orphanage, this served as like the punishment room? Exactly. At night, people they are cleaning on the offices and stuff. They were hearing many noises of uh, children crying. Nobody was outside. I was conducting my rounds between 2 and 3 a.m. I noticed that someone was in the garden area near my security hut. I saw that it was someone wearing a Benedictine or Franciscan robe with a hood, and he seemed to be on his knees. I tried to approach the figure, but he disappeared before I could reach him. Carlos, we really appreciate the city, you know, trusting us and bringing us in. We're going to go get the equipment, get the rest of the team, let them know what's going on here, and uh, start getting set up and see if we can give you those answers you're looking for. Great. All right, we'll see you we'll soon. Be, yeah, Thanks, okay, Carlos. Thanks, bye. Coming to the team, I'm hoping to actually bring uh, some, some new ideas, um, some new tech that I've actually been building myself. So hopefully, we're going to start seeing some new evidence coming forward. OK, folks, uh, that's our camera setup. Uh, camera number one is on the stairs where the reports of this priest walking up and down. Camera number two is out where the images of the children are said to appear and also where that alleged torture chamber was. Camera number th three is in the office where this priest is said to walk through. All right, and as far as new equipment as well, Paul, I know you're bringing some new things to our rather small table as well. I am. Um, I'm hoping to um, actually increase the uh, night vision capabilities of our uh, some of our equipment. By using some of my own illumination devices, Devices, I'm able to increase the IR range up to like 50 feet. In addition to that, I've actually uh, brought a data logger, which is going to let us uh, actually collect information from the start to the finish on temperature and humidity in certain areas where there's been cold spots. Okay. I think we all know that we have a lot of stuff we have to cover tonight, and I think we have the equipment to do it. So uh, let's get to work. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> This is the office where they come back and all the objects are moved around. Yeah. We went in and set up a, a multi-field meter. What I had it measuring specifically was a static charge. A static meter is a device that picks up static discharge in the area around the box. The lights indicate the level of static discharge. As the lights start to go up, it shows that there's a greater static discharge in the air. The idea is that a spirit manifesting might give off static, which we can then measure. Now, if you could just back up out of the office. Sure. We left equipment inside the office and exited to see what would happen. So why don't we fire some shots down this hallway and see if we got anything here. And then we can go back in and see if anything's changed. Okay. Bien. Ven aquí, por favor. We were taking pictures when we heard what sounded like something rustling around inside the office. It sounded like something was shuffling around in there. If that's so, then theoretically it should have been recorded. It's full on.
We were taking pictures when we heard what sounded like something rustling around inside the office. Full on. We went back in there, and the static meter that we had set up had gone all the way up, as if something had been really moving around in that area. Hola. Who's here with us right now? We didn't notice anything out of place. Nothing in the room seemed to have been moved. But the static meter was still active, and we don't know what caused that. The nice thing is that we also had the digital voice recorder running, so hopefully we actually have the sounds of that rustling around. And that was weird. Yeah. Joe and I started out by going to the courtyard. We're placing the motion detecting camera there to cover the area. Right now, what I want to do, I should set this on this tree here. The motion sensor cameras are basically wildlife cameras. These are cameras used out in woods, forests, to capture uh, deer or bear. If a client comes to us and they're seeing an apparition in a particular area, what we can then do is set up this camera and basically unmanned, this will take a photo if triggered. Alrighty. Now, if anything should trigger that, we should get a flash. <clears throat> this is Joe and Paul in the courtyard. It is now 25 past. Whoa, 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 shh, shh, shh. Come on, come in, come in, come in. What's the matter? I could hear that. The dripping. Hear that tap? Damn it. I thought it was running. I could hear, you know, little footsteps. Mm-hmm. Pitter patter? Yeah, you know, like, like, like a few little feet running. <sighs> hey, is that game giving off anything? Yeah, man, let's have a look. Now, that's dead. That's nothing coming from that at all. I'm getting like a 0, 0.0 on this. That was interesting. No one's over there at all, are they? All of a sudden, the flash from the wildlife camera went off. Well, how far is the range? 15 feet, maybe. I checked the camera and inspected the picture that was taken. And there was nothing unusual in the shot. Well, it's also windy. So if branches it's, if, and the yeah, trees. I've got to assume that uh, the, the wind maybe blew something in front of the motion camera, which triggered it, and it's nothing paranormal. So I guess this is where they used to uh, keep the orphans, the little kids, for punishment in cages. Brandy and I went to investigate the area that was formerly used as a um, punishment area for the orphans and children who stayed here. So if the kids were bad, they would put them in cages? Mm -hmm. When this building changed hands, they found their clothes we went in and set up a, a multi-field meter. What I had it measuring specifically was ion count as well as static charge. Now, if you see this, this object on the desk, could you make the lights go up very quickly, muy rápido? Static ion count is going up really quickly. Father Juan, can you please show yourself? Por favor, hablar. Can you speak to us? Can you make a noise? Now the static is blinking. Listen, if you're controlling those lights right now, can you move it down to just one light? Just one green light. Bien. Gracias. Now we'd really like to see more lights come on. Huh. Wow. Are you kidding me? Wow. Three of them right there. Time and time again, as we kept asking questions, it kept responding in the way that we asked. Can you turn on another light? Can you blink? Can you go back a light? Um, again, this is a new piece of technology, so we have to just keep experimenting. We can't jump to the conclusion this is paranormal. These steps, you gotta be really careful. Yes. 
Some of them have got the rubber tread and some don't, so. Oh, this is a small room. This is a very small room. Paul and I were investigating the, uh, the cellar area where it would have been a, a torture chamber at one point. Well, you know what? I'm going to take a seat. OK. Oh, OK. This is uh, Joe and Paul in the uh, downstairs basement. Please, is there anyone down here tonight? Any persons that were tortured in the past? Could you still be lingering? I'm just going to take some pictures near you, Joe. Every now and then I get like this, sort of almost like there's a shadow near you. Must be horrible to be tortured to death. If there's someone with us, can you move something, uh, tap on something, you know, even just say hello? Definitely has an odd feel to this room. There is. There, you know what? There's like a, a heaviness. I mean, are there any any reports from this place? Is there any? No. There's, really? There's no really reports down here. It's all upstairs. Like, they see uh, an apparition interesting. of a priest going up the stairs. What's the matter? I felt like someone just pushed my head down. Matter. It felt like someone just pushed my head down. Really? Seriously, just my head just felt like a hand just touched my head. Holy crap. There's no spider webs or anything. Well, you know, it was a shock. I mean, I've, I've never, ever experienced uh, being touched before. I mean, look, there's nothing there. No, there's nothing. It felt like someone's hand went on my head, literally pushed my head down. Well, I had my camera shining on you. You did? Yes. That is awesome. It's a, it's a strange feeling. I've got the creeps now. Yes. I've got the, yeah. You'll have it for a while. The heebie-jeebies. <laughs> it was kind of a little bit, um, a little overwhelming for me. That can be quite unsettling. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to have to go and get some air. OK. <sighs> that was weird, man. Paul reported some activity in this area, so Dustin and I wanted to check that area for ourselves. We are a prisoner down here. Are you a member of the clergy? Did you hear something from down there? To comprehend this, can you tell us the name of the person who hurt you? Don't be afraid. Did you hear something that time? Yeah, something going on, Dustin. Underneath my hat, the hair is starting to go up in the back of my neck. Mm. This is similar to the activity that Paul experienced. Te muerte aquí. Are you angry? I just thought I heard my camera. It sounded like my full spectrum camera, um, and uh, I knew I hadn't I hadn't switched the remote, uh, so I just needed to go up and, and check that everything was okay. Everything alright, mate? The camera seems fine, doesn't everything seems fine? Let's go upstairs. Dustin and I decided to go to the top of the stairs where Father Juan had been seen. Padre Juan, tu estás aquí. You were reported to have been seen here. Do you understand we are trying to communicate? Why do you continue to stay on this premises? Dustin, we just got a shadow change down there. Something happened down there across in that open doorway. And there was light coming in and then suddenly it just stopped. I wonder if I bring up the foot spectrum and set it there on a tripod. Yeah, there you can just, uh, just let it roll on. Yeah, it hit the remote from here. Yeah. Uh, now, we set up the full spectrum camera to take its shots. I was using the remote, so I was able to control the shots and when they were going off. Now hopefully, whatever I saw will be captured in the images. 
All right, everyone, good job tonight. Uh, get back to Command Central and start packing it up. This case was incredible. We came in, we had a lot of recent activity, a lot of stories to follow up on, and the team made sure that we hit each and every single one of them, and we got results. We had activity. As for my experience with uh, someone touching my head, that was weird. As someone that's a skeptic as myself, I'm racking my brains and not quite coming up with anything yet, so chalk that one up as a heck of an experience. Going into the analysis for Bosque City Hall, it was a good evening that we had. A lot of equipment was being used, a lot of new experimental equipment was being used, which will help us garner more information and will help keep GHI on the forefront of uh, paranormal investigations. Okay, folks, let's get started and see what turns up. Okay. Guys. Why don't you have a look at this full spectrum camera shot? This was taken on the top of the stairs where the reports of this priest is said to walk up and down. So we wanted to see if anything was going to appear and we set the full spectrum there. Now, as you can see, um, just this little piece of light down the right hand side, we're in the office immediately to the left. Now, the very strange thing that happens here is the next shot, there's an extreme light source in there that totally whites out everything. Are you using any sort of illumination yourself, the IR illumination from yourselves? No, we're using no IR. The, the only IR we are feeding off to focus is coming from this camera, number one. But we go to the next shot, and right. everything's back to normal. So something appeared in front of the camera. But because we can't gather any information from the picture itself, I definitively can't say that's paranormal. So we just have to let it go. Definitely an interesting photo, they Barry. Guys, basically, Rob and I are in the domestic violence room, and uh, we're talking about what will happen to us when we die. So, take a listen and, and, and see what you can make of it. Is there more waiting for us? No, that was a real good one. Carlos. How are you? Good to see you, sir. Yeah, good to see you again. We have quite a bit to talk to you about. Um, as you know, you took us around, told us the stories. We brought together the entire team, set up equipment, uh, a wide variety of equipment. We do have a video to show you. Mm -hmm. This comes from the, the basement with uh, Joe and Paul. I'm going to just play the video for you and uh, let you see uh, what happened down there. Yeah, OK. The, uh, an apparition. That is interesting. Of a priest going up the stairs. What's the matter? I felt like someone just pushed my head down. Really? Mm -hmm. This is what we call a personal experience. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have a piece of equipment that we can actually show a measurement of the pressure, you know, on his hair. Yeah. I don't know. You can see the reaction. You see, yeah. The reaction that, was... Right. He jumps up and, yeah, and yeah. you know, is looking around for what could have touched yeah. him. It's strange, huh? It's definitely strange. Well, let's get a little stranger then. <laughs> <laughs> Myself and Brandy, we had an experience where we were outside the room where things are said to be moved around. Yeah. And we actually had a static meter. We heard what sounded like things being shuffled in the room. We ran, we opened the door. The static meter was on full, as if someone had, had moved things around. Mm -hmm. But here's the strange thing. We checked the audio recorder. There's no sound. So. That's a personal experience. Now, we did pick up a sound that we found interesting. We had a wireless recorder in what was Father Juan's uh, room. These sounds are coming from an empty room with no one in it. Mm -hmm. We're going to play that for you. Mm -hmm. We want to define what it was. I can help you on that one, because I spent some time in that office. That first set of sounds is actually the chair moving, that mm -hmm. popping sound. Mm -hmm. Second sound sounds like someone trying to move the door. We carefully checked our video footage. There's no one in that room. That made me scared a <laughs> bit. Now, there were some other things that we picked up. Um, we were doing a lot of EVP sessions. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomenon. 
Mm -hmm. Now, the first one I want to play for you is uh, myself and Paul, one of the other investigators, were in where you showed us a domestic violence office. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I was asking, what happens, where do you go after you die? And at the end of this recording, uh, there's a male voice that gives us a pretty, pretty serious response that we weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. Is there more waiting for us? Something <laughs> strange, difficult to define, huh? Yeah, so to me, it, it sounded like the word mm. hell. Yeah. Which is a little strange for a response when you ask, what's going to happen after this? And the response is hell. Wow. Do have a couple of other things I want to share with you. I was with uh, Barry, and we were down in the cellar part. While we were down there, there was a voice that uh, was picked up on the recording. Mm -hmm. So I can smell the chemicals everywhere. Hmm. It was... We're here, I heard. I mean, that's, that's something strange. Wow. So, with all that said and done, we do feel there's spirit activity here at the City Hall. Wow. Well, we're, we will leave the evidence with you I um, see. For, so that you can demonstrate to the other people here, yeah, 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 let them see what they think, and um, Carlos, thank No, you, listen, for me it was a pleasure. Huh? I think people from the City Hall will be very excited, and now we are going to be able to show them proof. For me, it's incredible. That helped me a lot, that uh, people will understand better. What can I say is, thank you, GHI. I think Carlos was happy. At the end of the day, we did exactly what we were brought in to do. We captured some EVPs for him, had a little personal experience thrown in there. It turned into a great investigation and a great case. All right, man, let's keep moving. All right. Hey everyone, well, welcome to Valparaiso, Chile. I also want to thank Paul for coming out with us, and uh, Brandy is telling us we have a really good case here, and uh, she's going to give us the details. Hey guys, we're headed to Santiago Severin Library, and it was the second library built in the country of Chile. Now, we've been contacted by the staff of the library because they say that they've been experiencing some really crazy stuff there. They've seen full-bodied apparitions, and for the most part, they believe they know who these individuals are. They think that they're seeing one of the old directors and his wife. And she's been seen walking through the bookcases and just disappearing. People feel very uncomfortable and they just really would like some answers. All right, well, sounds like a great case. Uh, a lot of visual stuff going on. So this is it right up here. Let's get in there and get to work. Jerry. Rob, hi. Welcome to uh, the Santiago Severin Library. The library here plays a very important part in the community. And I've heard many stories about ghosts in the library. And I think it's very important that GHI investigate these occurrences and come up with some answers. Well, we're very excited to be here. Um, could you tell us some of the history about the place? Yeah, a, a very wealthy philanthropist called Santiago Severin decided to build a library. The building was built between uh, 1912 and 1919, and it has about 180,000 books at this moment. There are also a few strange happenings that this library has. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, if you wouldn't mind showing us where the hot spots are and exactly what's going on. Okay, well, let's start off through here, shall we? Okay. The living quarters of the second director of the library. He used to live here with his wife. A, a person who's been working here for 15 years says that um, on lots of occasions she's been in here and this handle has rattled. The doorknob was moving like it was trying to open. I watched the lock jiggle up and down like someone was trying to get in, but there was no one there. Pero no entra nadie. And some people believe that uh, it was probably caused by the, the wife of the director who used to go through this door uh, every day to church. Do we know if the gentleman and his wife who lived here, did they pass away on the premises? They did, yes. All right, we'll follow you. Okay, walk this way. 
Okay, guys, this is the basement. And every day, they had to bring the daily deposits down the stairs and into the safe. Um, when they got to this platform here, they felt extremely cold. It was a very strange cold. They would often feel on the back of their necks as though somebody was blowing on them. And uh, they just didn't want to come down here on their own. Okay, guys, uh, another member of staff has actually seen an apparition here, which everyone calls the Black Lady. Many times I've seen a woman in a black dress. I looked down and she had no feet. She was just floating along the basement floor. Okay, guys, one day one of the workers came down to talk to the repairman, and as he was talking, uh, over his shoulder was seen an apparition through there. They said, that's Juanito. He was a sort of janitor. Juanito died in 1996. As I approached the repair room door, I could see my reflection on the glass. Suddenly, I saw Juanito standing right behind me. I ran back upstairs and decided never to go down to the basement by myself again. No mas. Okay, guys, that's the end of the tour. Then it's time for us to get to work and uh, see if we can't find some answers for you. We'll see you soon. Okay, Thanks. well, good luck. All right. The people that work here, many of them are afraid, even though they recognize the spirits of the people they think they know. So I think that GHI can come in here and do one of two things. Either we can help to identify um, the potential spirit activity and who this might be, or we can disprove some of the stories about paranormal activity and help them feel comfortable here. There is a piece of equipment that Paul has brought in, data logger for temperature and humidity. I've just placed the data logger at the bottom of the stairs because the reports are telling us that there's uh, cold spots. If the temperature does drop in any way, that will be collecting the data throughout the investigation. Once we've finished, we can plug it into the laptop and it'll just tell us if there's been any spikes or any uh, increases or decreases of temperature. Okay, Rob, that's the camera setup. Camera number one is up on floor number two, where the lady is said to come walking down the corridor right, with something right. in her hand. Yep. Cameras number two and four are down in the basement here to try and capture the image of the lady in black who is said to walk along the corridors here. Mm -hmm. Camera number three is in the main library. All right, perfect. Well, the cameras all look good. Let's get the lights out. Let's go dark. Okay. It's an EVP session with Paul and Rob in the theater. Paul and I came to the theater here in the library. Also, the janitor Juanito is said to be seen up here. That's Juanito aquí? What was that? It was a slight noise from the stage. Are you on the stage? Donde esta? Habla inglés? Did you just hear a whisper? No, no. So listen for like a small sound up by the stage. Juanito, por favor, ven aquí. Okay, I just heard a whisper. That's Juanito aquí? Por favor, ven aquí. Okay, I just heard a whisper. During the investigation of the theater, at two different times, Paul and I both thought we heard disembodied voices, small whispers. It, it sounded like it came from that side. You see where the, the curtain may be? Around there somewhere. We thought it was coming from the back of the stage. We investigated back there. Is there anybody actually in here with us? I mean, there's no one back here. No. We're looking for water pipes or radiator. Nothing. Es Juanito aquí? Again. Juanito, ven aquí, por favor. Come, 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 come. Ben, 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 ben. Rapido, por favor. Los su amigos. Make a noise somewhere here. Move a chair. Dude. Do you hear that? Well, you heard it too, yeah? Yeah. It sounded like someone just sat down. 
Rob and I were at the front of the stage asking for someone to come forward, and I decided, you know what? If you're in the audience, sit down, move a chair for us. Within seconds, we heard the shuffling of a chair, like uh, someone was even getting themselves comfortable, or they were just, you know, preparing to sit down. I've never heard the, can you move a chair, and it actually and it moved moved a chair. moves a chair. This is an EVP session. This is Paul and Rob, and... EVP recording, Dustin and Barry in the library. Dustin and I came down into the basement to see if we could find any evidence of this Lydia in black that said to walk the halls. Is there anyone down here who has anything to say? Who is the woman in black? What is your name? Dustin. There you go. Several times now that I've heard rustling coming from down there. Just from down the end there? Yeah. Okay, to estás aquí, señorita? Why are you down here? Is it draft? Yeah, I feel it coming from behind. There's no vent there. Hmm. One point during our EVP session, Barry and I both felt a uh, cold draft moving from one side of the room. Everything appears to be pretty constant. And I was using the thermal camera to see if we could try to pinpoint where it was coming from. But uh, all the surface temperatures were the same. There was a one degree fluctuation in temperature, that was it? Mm -hmm. Barry was able to uh, get a thermometer to document the change. He was uh, able to find that there was a temperature change of, uh, of one degree. But that doesn't account for the cool breeze that we were feeling. One of those things that uh, we were just down here and uh, happened to experience. Joe and I headed into the director's room um, where apparently they've seen a, an apparition, a, a woman in black uh, appear holding something near the doors. I'm gonna set up the EMF detector by the door. Okay. Are you the wife of the director? If you understand us, can you please come forward? Come through the doors towards us. There's a box in front of the doors in this room. And if you come close enough, it'll register a sound to let us know that you are in the area. If you understand what's going on and what happened to you, now is the time to tell us your story. All right, Jill. Audio session end. All right, everybody, it's about that time. Uh, let's get to Command Central and get those lights on. There were a couple things that really stood out to me from tonight's investigation, um, one of which was when myself and Paul were investigating the theater, and Paul had asked, why don't you sit down and move one of the chairs? At that moment, it sounded as if someone moved or sat down in one of the chairs. Uh, I had the audio running. It was very loud, so I'm hoping we picked it up. We're about to go into the analysis for Santiago Severin Library. We had some wonderful new pieces of equipment. The full spectrum camera has now got an upgrade. And Paul has brought the data logger in, which is going to be extremely useful to analyze what was going on at the staircase where the reports of a draft were said to come in. So hopefully that will reflect onto the case itself and we'll have collected some good evidence. Hey guys, I think I might have something here. Um, this is Dustin. He's in the basement of the library. Um, and the thermal cam is pointing at him. And as he walks towards and past the thermal cam, you see what looks like a, an image of a person that walks from left to right. And then it disappears. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you think. And there. It's very, very hard to make out. Just pull it back a little bit. OK. Oh, yeah, I can see what you're talking about, Joe. 
but I can also see that the door is closed at the end of the corridor it's because there's glass in the window of the door. It's reflecting Dustin's body heat. Oh. It's extremely sensitive. Wow. That was a good catch, that. Wow. Yeah, that was kind of freaky at first. I said, what is that? <laughs> All right. Hey guys, do you remember me mentioning that, that Rob and I were up in the auditorium and we mm -hmm. uh, we asked for you know, someone yeah. to sit, take a seat or move a chair? Take a listen. Okay. Move a chair. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, hello, guys. Good to see you, Jerry. Nice to see you back. I'm really interested to know what happened and what news you've got to report. Well, we definitely are going to tell you some interesting things, I think. Now, at one point in the night, down in the uh, basement level, I was there myself with Barry, and uh, following up on the claims that people say uh, they feel a uh, cold breeze or a breath on their neck. And in that particular area, there was a temperature fluctuation that both of us had kind of felt. Uh, we also have a piece of equipment that's called the data logger. This thing takes a reading of temperature, humidity, and dew point every two seconds, up to 16,000 readings. We then put it on the computer and it can show us a graph. So if we saw something where suddenly the temperature dropped several degrees, we could say, okay, maybe there was something paranormal. There was no, no significant change. So that is going to be, have to be kind of left a mystery at this point. Right. I did spend some time with Paul looking at the doorknob in the old living quarters of the director and his wife. Uh -huh. And as you said, you know, there is that door on the outside, obviously, and there's a gate on the other side of it. Um, so we know that no one was coming through and actually manipulating the doorknob themselves. Right. Uh -huh. We did want to see, though, if there could have been a draft coming through there or anything. And what we found is there is, uh, there is a slight opening between the doors, but that only actually would shake the door back and forth. It doesn't affect the handle in any right. way. Right. So that's another claim where it was just, that would have to have been manipulated by, by some sort of energy, uh, but throughout our investigation, the door handle obviously didn't move or do anything. Right. We had the theater room with the piano. We did find something interesting that we want to play for you. Right. Myself and Paul were standing up on the stage. There was no one in the audience, uh -huh. and we were asking the spirit to do something. Uh -huh. So we'll play that for you now. Okay. Make a noise somewhere here. Move a chair. That was a bump at the end, huh? You can hear that sound, but we were both standing on the stage, and the sound came, or so we thought, from one of the seats in the audience, which is certainly interesting given that he had just said, can you sit in one of the seats? Now, we had no further sound from anywhere in that area. So for us to say, you know, this was a spirit responding to the question. Yeah. Given the, the open layout of the library and the way that the sound moves throughout, uh, we couldn't make that step. Uh -huh. So during our time here, no evidence of the paranormal was captured. No black ladies, no Juanitos. Right, nothing. All right, Jerry, well, thank you for everything, Well, sir. thank you. You did a fantastic job. Yeah, um, thank you, Jerry. That. Yeah, let's yeah. go. The people here that have been seeing these apparitions will be a little bit disappointed that you weren't able to find them. But um, I think GHI have done an extremely thorough job, and if there was anything around, I'm sure they would have found it. I think Jerry, he understood that we're bringing in more equipment than ever before. Yeah. Paul did a great job, and it'll be interesting to see where the technology that's coming out here takes us. You know, we got a lot of new pieces of equipment. We got a lot of things that are working together towards the same goal. You know, certainly from everything that we receive there, there doesn't seem to be paranormal activity any longer. No, nope. nice place, just uh, lack of ghosts. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep it moving. All right, man.